Hey, this is Aaron. And this is Kristen. And this is the Drive Mojo. Hey, everybody. We got a good one today. You'll see we have an extra person on. So Kristen and Jill are going to be in the Rebel Rally driving a Hyundai Santa Cruz uh, for Hyundai. So this, uh, the rally, we've covered it before. Uh, last year, we talked to Nicole Wakeland. Uh, and uh, it, shoot, I screwed up the names. <laughs> no, I got Nicole that was right. two years okay. ago. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, was that two years ago? Yeah. I thought it was last year. And then Who Emmy is? Hall, we talked to her. Uh, but anyway, we're this year, we have like live participation, sort of. I mean, we're not going to be filming live or anything, but we have participants that uh, one of them is on our show. So, and then one of them is on one of our favorite shows. So, Jill here is part of Pickup Truck and SUV Talk with Tim Estradol. She is uh, carrying the show. Tim just kind of shows up. So anyway. <laughs> Uh, we love so you, Tim. <laughs> we just want to talk about uh, what it's what it's like for you because you're both newcomers to the rally. Um, for those who don't remember, the Rebel Rally is a it's not a timed race; it is a, a mapped race. So you're uh, basically you have to hit map points. The more of them that you hit, the higher your score, and then you have to make X amount of uh, distance uh, to finish. So it's not like, uh, you know, everybody starts on a start line and there's a checkered flag at the end. Uh, it's all about um, navigation and, and um, um, well, it's really just about navigation. <laughs> it's about <laughs> navigation and, and actually finishing. So, and driving. So Jill would be more familiar with that kind of idea because uh, it is basically a marathon in the desert um, and in like a car three-day marathon or 10-day marathon in the middle of the desert. <laughs> exactly. So uh, first question for you guys is um, you had to hold the lid on this for a while because because I remember uh, we, did, we did some filming and, and uh, you guys told me and I was pretty excited to find out, but we had to like keep it quiet uh, because there wasn't an official announcement yet. How difficult was it for you to not just explode and let everybody in the world know this is what I'm doing? <laughs> Go ahead, Jill. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was it was a little bit hard, but I'll be honest with you, it felt really surreal. So it didn't feel like it was really happening. And so it was like hard to not tell anybody. But then also it wasn't hard because it wasn't real yet. And I think it didn't really become real for me until we did our training a couple of weeks ago. And now I'm like, oh, oh yeah, no, this is, this is happening. <laughs> oh yeah. We got real stuff to work on. Yep. And you know, yesterday I heard a funny rumor um, through another auto manufacturer that asked if we were getting paid to do this for Hyundai. I was like, no, <laughs> we are not getting paid to do this for anybody. They are paying our entry fee and they're pro providing the vehicle, of course, but Nobody's paying us for doing this for our own pain and suffering and, and glory. For, for our own joy and personal growth. Um, yeah, no, I, that's interesting um, that somebody asked if we were getting paid. No, we are accepting no money. Um, and um, we've actually shelled out a lot of money out of our own pocket already um, with gear. And I, I think uh, REI and I are now BFF. Um, because I've, I've bought, um, probably at least a thousand dollars worth of gear from them <laughs> I love just that. because I, I didn't have a tent, you know, well, we don't have a tent. We're still going to have to get a tent because we have a two person tent that we need something bigger, but I mean, I it's got cozy, it's, it's <laughs> very cozy, but it will not fit us and our gear and we need it to fit both. Um, but, but yeah, no, I mean, sleeping bag, sleeping mat. I, I mean, just like stupid stuff from like. I'm like, what kind of pants do you wear in the desert for 10 days? I, so it's just like, yeah, trying to experiment with clothing and socks and um, boots and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I, I expect my REI dividends this year are going to be really good. So, yeah, um, you guys talked earlier, you mentioned that you had gone to training. Uh, do you train where you're going to be racing uh, or is it a completely separate? I think it's separate, but you would know better than I, because you've actually been attended as media. 
Yeah, it's it's yes and no. I mean, they don't obviously they don't give us the exact coordinates of where we're going to be for the competition because it changes slightly every year. But we did train in Glamis Sand Dunes for a full day and very close to where we were going to be, where we're going to be competing in October with similar conditions. So yes and no, like we didn't go through the Nevada part yet or the Northern California or not Northern California, but like a little more rocky terrain. We haven't done that part yet. We'll do that in August or September, August, I think. Yeah, August. But you, you've been in the sand at least. So now you know why the military tucks their pants into their boots. (laughs) <laughs> yes that is a great point <laughs> i'm still like getting sand out of my ears and uh like I, i'm finding sand in very random places in my house because i had to bring my gear through the house before i like put it in the garage for storage so yeah <laughs> yeah i've i've been in those situations and i know that like uh you just wish you had like the little air compressor you clean your keyboard with to just because yeah. <laughs> it gets so embedded everywhere um, yes, we might need one of those kind of air compressors. Speaking of air compressors, <laughs> Aaron, not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you haven't asked us this yet, but you know, we had an air compressor. Um, it was a particular, just a basic brand to air up our tires. So we had to air them down to go into the desert. Mm-hmm. And we were the first person who arrived to the checkpoint and the last truck to leave because our air compressor was so slow. <laughs> so that's one thing we've already learned is that we need a better air compressor. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you have to be able to run it off the vehicle, right? So it has to be a 12 volt operation. So yeah. Um, there's, I, I don't, I don't know of any that are great until you start spending a fair amount of money. Um, <laughs> so we just need it not to take 20 minutes to air up a tire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. when I was driving <laughs> over the road, I just used the truck's air compressor to, to do that stuff. Uh, so next question is about, um, the Hyundai itself, like your, your relationship there, you mentioned it a little bit, but also the truck, uh, because for Hyundai, this is a first time entry, uh, into the rebel. And it's also, uh, literally a brand new truck. Um, and I think all of us, you guys have obviously driven it at this point. I've driven it, um, as an every day, I didn't, I didn't do any kind of serious off-road. I'm not, I'm not crazy like you guys, but (laughs) um, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, how, how that has worked out. Have you been uh, helping Hyundai work out kinks that maybe they didn't foresee? Uh, Are you guys finding things that you didn't know because until you're actually there, you don't see it. Um, And the truck itself, your impressions of it so far, insofar as having what you've done off road with it so far. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we both agree that it does really well in the sand. Um, It has a low center of gravity and it just kind of floats. And so it does, it does very well in that um, situation, but it only has 8.6 inches of ground clearance. And so the one thing that we discovered is it's not going to be enough ground clearance to do certain obstacles. So, um, you know, we've already put uh, Nitto tires on the vehicle, so they're not stock tires. So we're not in the bone stock category. And um, so we're trying to think then, okay, is there something else we could do to maybe help this along a little bit to make things a little bit easier? Um, Like one of the obstacles we came to, it was like the cement step and it was probably 8.6 inches. And we like literally like nosed up to the step and we're just like, yeah, there's no way we can like get over that. So it's like, all right, do we talk about putting a lift on it? Do we talk about like, what, what can we do to give us just a little bit better, like approach and departure angles? Um, and I don't know that we've come to any conclusions there. And maybe, maybe the idea is we don't do anything and we just need to learn how to use our max tracks um, to create a ramp up over the obstacle. And um, so like, I, I really feel like this first training was for us to kind of see what the pain points might be. And then now we have to work on trying to find the solutions to those pain points. And Kristen and I have been talking and we've been having some conversations with Hyundai about that as well. 
And, um, I, you know, overall, I think the vehicle does really well. And it has heated and cooled seats. So both, I think, in the desert will be very important. <laughs> Yes, and I think it's a very good mix of utility and comfort. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, there's a couple of reasons that we asked Hyundai, like we came to Hyundai and said, this is what we want to do. This is the vehicle that we want to drive and this is why. And we thought the, the Santa Cruz would be a good choice. I think that we found that's an even better choice than we anticipated. I was so impressed by how it handled the sand I mean, it just surfs over the sand and goes over the sand dunes so smoothly, you know, so we just have to figure out how we're going to handle that approach angle. And, you know, what the, part of this rally is about problem solving. So one thing they said is you can build a rock bridge, look around, look and see if you can build a rock ramp up to that obstacle and go over it. So we're figuring out those things as well. So the model you're driving is the turbocharged, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, the turbocharged model, for those who don't know, there's uh, there's two different engine options for the uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, the non-turbo uh, has limited towing uh, uh, and hauling capability, and is but it's otherwise the same engine. So it's basically the same engine. Uh, it just doesn't have the turbo uh, turbocharging to add a little more power. When you go to the turbocharged model, uh, you add about 2,000 pounds of towing and a bunch of other capabilities, uh, as well as just honestly a better drive uh, for the vehicle. But most of the stuff about the Santa Cruz is the same as you will find on the Santa Fe model. So the all wheel drive system is almost literally just copy pasted from one to the other. And the Santa Fe uh, the Santa Fe's all-wheel drive system is very, very well done. Uh, it has nice torque, torque vectoring uh, for, you know, I've only driven it in snow and ice on a frozen lake and on, on stuff like that, um, and light off-road. I didn't do anything hardcore with it. Uh, but it's, it's a very good all-wheel drive system. So I imagine in the sand, the snow and sand are very similar. Mm -hmm. I imagine in the sand, it's very good. Um, the Santa Cruz is is a, a, a really well done truck. It's actually my favorite of the three small car based pickup trucks you can get now. Um, I like it better than the Ford Maverick and it's smaller. Uh, so not terribly comparable to the Honda Ridgeline, but it is, uh, I think a better truck than that um, just because of the capabilities it has um, for the size. So uh, that's a great choice for you guys to go with. Um, I didn't think about the the ground clearance being a problem because I have seen Subarus being used in the Rebel before, uh, and they have about that. The Outback's about 8.6, depending on the model, um, between 8.6 and 9 inches, and uh, most of the Imprezas, I think, are a little over 8 inches at least. Um, so I was kind of surprised to see to uh, that that's a that's kind of a hindrance, but at the same time, for you guys, it's puzzles, right? You're just... Like... Well, and I think the part of the issue with the ground clearance isn't the ground clearance itself. It could be the approach and departure angles because the, the front end of the Santa Cruz just comes down really low. It doesn't have like a, a slope um, that, um, would give you a better approach angle. Like eight, if, if, and, and I, I'm like thinking about Subarus, I think their bumpers are just shaped a little bit differently. They give a better to, you know, because they're meant to go off road ish and especially the wilderness models. And so, um, I think it's, it's more to do with the approach angle than it is the ground clearance. Um, but if we give it a little extra ground clearance, that'll help with the approach angle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing that Hyundai suggested is maybe we can put a one inch lift kit on it, but we'll see. I mean, I think it's a really good opportunity to show what the Santa Cruz can do with a little bit of extra help or what it could be because by itself, it's great. I mean, all they added was a skid plate and the off-road tires. So just like that, it handles really well, but what more could it do? Like, most people who drive the Santa Cruz aren't going to take on a 1500 mile rally, but if they want to, this is what they could do. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to ask uh, if maybe, 
modifying the bumper on the front would change it. But now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think you could do that because I believe the I believe the uh, the uh, the coolers. So both the radiator and the transmission and uh, whatever. The, all there's three coolers in the front. Thinking about looking at the truck, I think they're too low. I don't think you could do that. They would also have to be lifted, which means the framing that supports them has to be lifted. Uh, so that would be a, a serious undertaking. Um, and to go to what Kristen just said, I don't see modifiers who get a hold of the Santa Cruz on the street lifting and adding bigger tires. There's going to be somebody that does that. They do it with PT cruisers and everything else. I don't see why they wouldn't do it with this. But, but for the most part, I see it being slammed instead of lifted. So I see more people probably would want to drop it instead of lift it up just because of the style, because of the look of it. Um, they used to do that with the Subaru, uh, the Subaru Baja and Brat uh, used to get the same treatment in California. So I could see that happening here. Um, I'm curious if the off-road tires added any lift. Uh, are they a slightly larger size or are they factory size for the uh, for the truck? No, they're, they're definitely um, bigger and um, interesting um, side fact here. We just learned this on the last call we had with Hyundai. The tires are, they, we're like, did you buy these specifically for the vehicle or were they just convenient? And they're like, well, they were kind of convenient. So these are the exact same tires that were on the Veloster Grappler concept that they had at SEMA um, in 2019. So you literally just took them off of the concept car and put them on our truck. <laughs> And so it was like a happy accident. They were available. And um, I, I, and I, so they're definitely bigger. I want to say they're, um, I, I used one of those like tire calculator things, like tire site, because like they didn't actually say on the tire what size they were. And I think they're 30 inch tires. So definitely, and, and I want to say they were 18 inch wheels. Um, so definitely bigger than the, the stock. So maybe that added a little bit of ground clearance, but I, I, I don't know. Interesting. Um, fastest way to do that, to find that out, is to have somebody pace you and tell you what your what their speed is versus what your speedometer says. Um. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's going to be something, too. We need to make sure that the um, odometer um, and, and everything is calibrated for the larger tires. Um, I, I, I believe we mentioned that to Hyundai the last time we were on the call. I'm, I'm going to have to like start writing a checklist of things to make sure <laughs> because that odometer is going to be very in the speedometer and everything. It's going to be very important to make sure that's calibrated for the competition because one of the things that we do is an enduro um, segment, which where they will give you basically a road book and you have to um, drive like They'll say drive 40 kilometers per hour for 1.2 kilometers, you know, then, you know, turn left and then drop your speed to 30 kilometers per hour for. And so, like, we need to first off put the Odo in kilometers, but also make sure that everything is calibrated appropriately so that we have some checks and balances. Um, Cause we'll, we'll have a separate, um, what I, what is the machine called? A separate thing that we will put in there um, that will be, it's like, it starts with a T. I but like Tara Terra track, I think. Yeah. It, so dealing with a little bit of a cold here. So my brain is not firing on all cylinders, but, um, we will have a separate, um, like Odo that is not in the car that will help us with a cap like that, but it would be much better. If what's behind the driver is so telling us what the navigator is looking at. Yeah. So, um, uh, I believe what you're talking about is a GPS based, uh, odometer, which is a, so it's no using, no, I mean, the unit you're talking about is using GPS location to measure your distance versus what the vehicle. So it's not tied to the vehicle. It's tied to your position. So it's not I giving mean, you a readout of your GPS. It's just using GPS to measure distance, how far you've traveled. Um, they use them a lot in uh, all kinds of rally races and in oh. so they're used in Dakar they're used in okay. uh, Baja they're used a lot um, because it's it's just an independent way to track versus depending entirely on the vehicle being properly tuned right right and that's going to be critical when we do the time speed distance segment and they said it's kind of a way to make the long stretches exciting you know because yeah. The whole thing is off road, you know, and one of my concerns before we did training was that we were going to have to, you know, 
blaze our way through the wilderness kind of thing, you know, make our own roads. But the fact is like most the roads that we're going on are they're dirt roads and routes. They're not going to be dangerous. Like you're going to fall off a cliff potentially, <laughs> you know, it's, these are established dirt roads for a lot of the part. And then there are some desert parts, especially where you can kind of go right. all over the public land area. And that's fun too. So why don't we go through uh, the rally itself as far as there are different segments of the rally, different things that you do in each segment. They may or may not be in the same order every year and they're not always in the same location every year, but there are these segments of things like Jill was talking about where you have to do, uh, you know, you go X and then you turn and then you go X and then you turn. Um, so what are the different segments? It's broken up, I think, by day, right? So certain days you're going to be one, doing one thing, other days you're doing something else. Um, so what are those segments? Every day, every morning, there is um, a meeting. You pretty much, everybody gets up at 5 a.m. And that's when they give you the coordinates for the day. These are the map points that you need to hit. The green points are mandatory. And those have a, a pretty big flag that you'll see. Blue points are not mandatory and they're a little bit smaller and a little bit more difficult to find. The black points, it's like, um, like a black diamond ski. You know, it's like super difficult and there is no marker there. You just have to click in with the device they give you and say, this is where I think it is. So every day they give you a mix of those kind of points to find. And then the meeting every morning is at 6 a.m. where Emily tells you, this is what you're gonna do. And then if there is an enduro in that day, it's usually getting from one point to the next point, then they'll give you the road book at that time. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, just talking about it, it sounds like, sounds like a video game, except in real life, right? So. <laughs> That's a lot of math, yeah. actually. <laughs> so yes. final question is going to be the hardest one. Um, how much are you guys looking forward to doing this? And how long have you thought I should try that? So I've wanted to do it for a few years now. I saw a video from Lynn Woodard. Um, she did um, a video um, during her first challenge and um, or her first run at it. And I was just like, I want to do this. This looks really cool. And um, so I've been playing around with the idea since like 2018, 2017. But it's just like, how do you find a partner? How do you find a car? How do you? And, uh, you know, and, and Chris and I were having conversations. She was like, well, I want to do it. And I was like, well, we should do it together. So um, found my partner. That was the biggest that was the biggest thing. And then um, trying to figure out after that, like, how do you target a car? How do you? And, and you know, we both zeroed in on Hyundai pretty immediately. Um, but I'm excited. I, I mean, I'm a marathon runner. I've done 11 marathons. It's all about endurance. It's it's very mental. You know, you start and you can't see the well, actually, in Chicago, you start at the finish. But usually you can't see the finish line. Um, when you start a marathon and, and so it's just like, you know, it's somewhere in the distance and you have to get there. And so it's just putting one foot in front of the other. And that's in a way kind of, you, you alluded to it earlier. That's kind of what I look at this as being is it's this very long marathon where there's a finish line in the distance. You can't see it, but you just one day at a time, one, one checkpoint at a time. And you just, you know, make it to the next, the next kilometer, um, and then go from there. And so I'm, I'm very excited. I think, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to being challenged. I'm looking forward to trying something new. Um, I won't say I'm looking forward to the math because I'm not, um, but, but definitely looking forward to, um, like team bonding and, uh, you know, just the celebration of women supporting women that happens during the rally. So very excited. I have been following the rebel for a few years. I was supposed to attend, I think it was two years ago as a, as a media person to go cover it. And then my mother-in-law needed to have surgery. So I needed to stay home. So last year I finally got to go and cover it as a journalist and, you know, going in, I, I was, I wasn't really thinking, you know, I, I necessarily want to do this. I, I was thinking, I want to know what this is all about. And I was so inspired by the women that were there, the teamwork, the collaboration, the learning. 
And then talking to Emily, I got to ride with Emily Miller. She's the founder and she was trained by Rod Hall to be an off-road competitor. And she's, she's tough. She's like five feet tall, like Jill. She's tough as nails. I mean, she's, she's awesome. So I was so impressed by what they were doing and I am really excited to do this. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very challenging, I think, from the navigation part, but I know I have a great partner and Jill is super supportive and encouraging and we, ha- we already have a safe word in case we get snappy with each other and we're going to say watermelon. <laughs> you know, so if somebody says watermelon, it means like, check your stuff, man, because <laughs> you're being snappy. We're going to try to avoid being hangry and we've already got a snack plan. So that is key, but it's going to be quite an adventure. Awesome. So uh, I'm really excited for you guys because I really, I really want to see this. Um, I know you guys are going to finish. I don't, I don't have any doubt about that. Um, you've got a good vehicle. Uh, you clearly make a good team. Uh, and you're both people that I know really well and really like. So I, and I know you enough to know you're not going to just quit. So this, <laughs> this is a, uh, this is really exciting. Um, it's uh, when does the rally start? It's, it's somewhere in August, October, October. October. Okay. Yep. It starts on my dad's birthday, which is October 6th. So, yep. So this has been a drive mode show. We've been with Jill Simonillo from pickup truck and SUV talk. And of course, Kristen, they are teamed up to do the rebel rally. It's going to be fun to watch this. So we will, we will keep tabs. We will, we will do one or two more of these somewhere through here. We'll talk a little more about your training, I think maybe next time. Uh, and then we will definitely do a uh, before and after cap of the, of the rally itself. Uh, and how you did. So this is Aaron. And this is Kristen. And this is the Drive Mode Show. Hit subscribe.